guys, uh, just doing the part two of, of uh, adultery. Um, I left off at First Corinthians chapter six, verses sixteen to seventeen. The next one I wanted to look at. Uh, what is that? The next one I wanted to look at was um, Ephesians 5, uh, 22 through 29 and 31 through 32. Uh, the Bible says, wives, be subject to your own husbands as a, as, as a service to the Lord. For the husband, the Bible says, is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. So what is the reason why the husband is the head of the wife? Because Christ is the head of the church. So the reason why... If I can make it simple, the husband is the leader of the household is because Christ is the leader of the church. He's the head of the church. The head leads the body. When you turn, when someone says, when someone calls your name, Thomas, you don't turn your body, then turn your head. You turn your head, then turn your body. You don't, you don't take, you don't walk and turn left and you turn your body, then you turn your head. No, your body always guides you. Your, eye, your head guides your body because your head has the vision. You see? So he says the same way the, uh, the husband is the head of the wife. Christ is the head of the church, himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should subject, should be subject to the husbands in everything. Why? It has nothing to do with gender, has nothing to do with whatever people are talking about. It has nothing to do with male and female. It has nothing to do with men and women. It has everything to do with the, what God is trying to reveal. In the same way, why does he keep saying as, as, as? Meaning, it's not about men and women. It's about Christ and the church. Men and women are just a shadow of a mystery. Christ and the church, the head and the body. It's about revealing Jesus Christ and how he loved the body of Christ. How he loved his own body. How he loved the church. And what's even the deeper revelation behind that? It is love. The reason why he, he, he sacrificed himself for the body is because of love. The reason why he died for the body is because of love. It's even a deeper revelation than Christ in the church. The deeper revelation there is love, which takes you back to God because God is love. You see? Why? Because God is trying to bring us into his realm, which is love. You see? Where did God exist before he created everything? He existed in love. That's the beginning of everything. For God so loved the world that he gave, Christ became, Christ came because of love. The story begins with love. So, he's creating marriage to reveal the mystery of how Christ loved the church, how Christ relates with the church, how Jesus loves the church, how Jesus cared for and is caring for his own body. Why? To even reveal a deeper mystery of love because love brings you back to God. So it's about Christ and the church. And even deeper than that, it's about love. Because the love of God is revealed in Christ sacrificing himself for the church. You see? And so he says, uh, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should be subject to their husbands in everything. This is the Amplified. So it says respecting both. The Amplified basically takes scriptures and puts them into context. So it'll put like parentheses and then explain things. It says respecting both their position as protector and their responsibility to God as the head of the house. Why do they have responsibility? Let me put it this way. Um, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is due. The, the husband in the household is given the responsibility to, to lead the house. You see? And so if the vision that God has given that household fails, it's the man's fault no matter what the woman does. That's why she respects him, understanding the responsibility he has. But it's not about that. It's about Christ. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church. You see? So when God has a vision to build a church in this earth, in these end times, to build an ecclesia, a body of called out people, it's Christ's responsibility to build that church. You see? The church comes the believers come to help him do that when adam was created remember go back to what i said before about adam adam was created god gave him an assignment and god said it is not good for man to be alone and then he said i need to make him a helper you see so adam has been given the responsibility first and then god sees that he needs help so he makes eve to come help him it's the same exact way he did with christ it's christ's job to build the church 
but the believers come to help him. We are the church, but we're also building the church, uh, in, or, or we're growing as a church. So God gives Christ the responsibility, but the church and the, his body, his bride, his Eve, Christ is Adam, the church is Eve. We come to help him, but he's the one with the responsibility. You see, God gave the commandment to not eat the tree to Adam. He didn't tell Eve. That's why when Eve ate the fruit first, she's the one that ate it first and gave it to Adam. But when God came, she came and asked Adam. Because even though Eve was technically the one that ate it first, Adam was the one that was given the responsibility. Why? Because God thought, in God's plan, he's supposed to tell the man and the man tells the woman. Because just like in a, in a company... When a big news comes, they don't tell every employee. They just tell the CEO and it passes down. They don't have to call every single person in the company. That's not efficient. Just tell the head. You don't need to tell everybody, right? There's, there's a hierarchy. There's an order of how things are done. So in the same way, he tells Adam and Adam will tell Eve. And then it'll pass down through as, as, out, as, out, as the human race passes down. And so he says, uh, the, the, the husbands, love your wives, seek the highest good for her. And surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also, it keeps saying just as, just as, meaning the reason why the husband does this or the wife does this is because Christ did that. Meaning it's supposed to review what Christ did. It's not about the husband and the wife. It's about Christ. It says, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify the church having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God, so that in turn he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He loves the church into glory, but that she would be holy, set apart for God and blameless. Even so, even so, even so, even so, husbands should and are morally obligated to love their own wives, being in a sense their own bodies, the same way, you see, oh, uh, he who loves his own wife loves himself. Why? Because they've become one. Because love, again, is eternal unity. Loving some, when, when a man chooses to love a woman, it's no longer him loving someone else. He's loving himself because she's become his body. Just as the church became. So Christ loving us is not him loving someone. He's loving himself. Even so, husbands should are and are morally obligated to love their own wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own body, but instead, do you hate your body? But he says, instead, you nourish and protect and cherish it, just as Christ, just as, just as, just as Christ does for the church. And then he says, for this reason shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined and be faithfully devoted to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Remember, in Genesis, the same thing happened. He says, remember what Adam said, she shall be called woman in Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's what Adam said in the book of Genesis. Now Paul comes back and says, for this reason shall a man leave, he's quoting what Adam said, because what Adam said, it, it was it was prophetic. It was revealing what's going to come in future times. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He says, this mystery of two becoming one. So marriage is the mystery of two becoming one, which is love. He says, is great. But I am speaking with reference to the relationship of Christ. He was just talking about marriage. But he's saying, I'm really talking about Christ in the church. Even though he's talking about marriage, the real mystery is the Christ in the church. You see, now, since we've laid down that foundation, now we can talk about adultery. What is adultery? Adultery is the voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. It is the seventh commandment in the law of Moses. It says, you shall not commit adultery in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. So it's a law. It was a law in the Old Testament. Now, why does God speak against adultery? Remember, again, adultery is when a married man or married woman sleeps with somebody who they're not married to. Again, a married man or married woman sleeping or having intercourse with somebody they're not married to. That is adultery. Why is God against adultery? Because remember what the marriage was created to shadow. 
It is God's desire to be unified or bring man into his unity. UT, you see, to bring man into fellowship with himself as love. You see, God's desire to be unified with mankind through his mediator, Christ. In other words, marrying. Remember, he says marriage is the mystery of two becoming one. It is a mystery. You see, it's supposed to reveal the mystery of two becoming one, which is the revelation of love. And he says, so adultery would be as mankind being unfaithful to God. How? By not submitting to him as them, as God being their head, but submitting to another head. That would be adultery because adultery biblically is not always used sexually. So sometimes it's used when someone uh, who's supposed to be devoted to God goes to serve idols. You see, so adultery sometimes is used sexually. Sometimes it's used in the sense of when a man or a Christian, instead of serving God, serves false gods because it's it's it, that's real. That's the real type of adultery is when uh, you're unfaithful to God because the first marriage is between God and man. And so just as adultery in the human sense is when a married person lays with someone they're not married to. So with God and man, adultery for the man would be when a man goes to submit to or become one with someone else who is not God or goes to serve someone else who is not God or submits to someone else who is not God because the man in this relationship is a is a type of the wife. You're the body of Christ. And the role of the body of Christ is to submit. Remember he said in the scripture, he says, um, it says, wives, be subject to your own husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. So the role of the wife is to submit themselves to the head as the body as my body is submitted to my head, my body, there's a reason why your body is below your head. It's a mystery. And so adultery for a man towards God would be a man submitting himself to another head, which is not Christ. So he says, so Paul says in um, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2 and 3, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy because I have promised you so I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy because I promised you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Meaning, I promised to God that you would only be devoted and married to him. He would be the only one you submit to. What does submit mean? Submit means to yield your will to his will. It means that um, you, you do what his desire is. You do what his will is. If your desire is to go left, but his desire is to go right, you submit yourself to his will. That's submission. So he's saying, uh, I promised you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid even as the serpent beguiled, the word for beguiled means seduced, even as, and the, the serpent is Satan, so, or Lucifer. So it says, even as Lucifer seduced Eve by his cunning, your minds may be corrupted and led away from the simplicity of your pure devotion to Christ. The same way Eve was unfaithful both to Adam and to God by not submitting him herself to God or uh, Adam, she was seduced into listening to the serpent, you see? So she was unfaithful to God because she was supposed to only listen to God Listening to God is submission to God. That's what the wife is supposed to do to God, who is her husband, her first, even before Adam. God is her first husband. So she was unfaithful to God. So that would be adultery. In the same way, a man or a woman, a wife or a husband, in the human sense, is unfaithful when they yield their body over to someone else who's not their spouse. Why is it wrong? Because adultery does not accomplish God's desire to reveal his love for man. When man, when a husband is unfaithful to a wife or a wife is unfaithful to a husband, it does not then reveal that God wants to be one with man. Because one, because the Bible says, you know, love, um, love never fails, the Bible says. It means love does not end. You see, we have these human kinds of love where somebody, someone says something wrong to you and you don't want to be with them anymore. That's not love. 
That's human emotion love. Love, the love of God, agape, does not end. It does not end. Meaning there's no day where God wakes up and says, I don't want men anymore. No. It's an eternal, that's why I gave the definition of love. It's eternal unity. The Bible says love is the bond of perfectness. It is eternal. It will never end. There will never be a day where the son and the father will no longer be one. No, they are together forever. You see? And that's just like when I said, God's des desire to be together with man forever is marriage. The two becoming one. That's marriage. And he gave us marriage on earth to reveal that plan. So when a man is unfaithful, and he, when a man is unfaithful to a wife, it doesn't reveal that plan because he doesn't want man to be unfaithful to him and he's never going to be unfaithful to man the bible says even if we are unfaithful to him he abideth faithful even when we're unfaithful to him he will never leave us the bible says he'll never leave us nor forsake us so if his plan is to use marriage to reveal his desire to be one with man forever but a man cheats on his wife or a wife cheats on his, uh, his husband it doesn't reveal that because that's not god's plan that's why it's wrong you see, so when God sets forth these laws, it's not, it's not just wrong just because it's wrong. No, every instruction, when, when God gives these laws, if he says, thou shalt not commit adultery, you right, it, it is because there's something he's trying to reveal. Now, in the New Testament, the Bible says love fulfills the law. Meaning, when you take all the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, so and so, so and so and forth. It says love fulfills the law. That means when you have love, God doesn't have to tell you don't steal. God doesn't have to tell you don't sleep with someone who's not your wife. Don't commit adultery. Because love worketh no ill towards its neighbor. That means the purpose of uh, these things being looked at as wrong is because what he's trying to reveal is love. The reason why a man should stay faithful to his wife and vice versa is because that them staying together reveals God's desire to stay together with man. It's a shadow. The reason why a man should be faithful to his wife is because Christ is faithful to the church. The reason why a wife should stay faithful to her husband is because the church should stay faithful to Christ. It's revealing God's plan. It's that simple. That's adultery. I'm going to end here. Again, if anybody wants to give their life to Christ, say these words with me. Father, I thank you for sending your son to die for me and raising for my glory. I receive him and I receive his life in Jesus' name. Amen. I receive the Holy Spirit by faith. God bless.